staged evaluation studies are recommended to control risks as a project is progressed towards a new mine development. If you look at the table, you will see that from left to right, only risk decreases, while the economic result accuracy, resource confidence, complexity of study, man hours and costs increase. At the end of each stage is a decision point. Shall we proceed with the next phase of work or not? A positive outcome triggers more drilling campaigns and other substantial costs until the study is completed. Applying a staged evaluation discipline ensures that only the best projects are advanced and both time effort and cost benefit are optimised. We'll now look at each of these steps in the evaluation process. Step one is the strategic exploration plan designed to answer the question, where is the value? These are low cost and high benefit studies, which can be undertaken in less than a week in most cases. The usual team is a geologist, a mining engineer, and a process engineer reviewing exploration data to assess if the project merits further work, and if so, where should the effort be directed to give maximum benefit for the next step, which is a scoping study. The focus of the strategic exploration plan is the geology of the deposit and resource definition, as these factors are the essential base inputs for all subsequent engineering studies. Typically, um, the strategic exploration plan will propose a scale and quality objective, consider potential mining methods, outline possible infrastructure areas, and propose the optimal drill pattern to define potential or limits. In the case of bulk commodities, such as coal, iron ore, and bauxite, the engineering assessment will have a bias to mine to market considerations and product marketability. Simple engineering and economic analysis at the early exploration stage is an excellent method to improve the quality of projects and prospects selected for advancement. Step two is the scoping study designed to answer the question what could it be? The scoping study is also known as a mining concept study and can be undertaken in a few weeks by a small team of mining professionals. It is the first formal mine engineering study. The usual accuracy range is 30% to 50%. The scoping study considers all mine development options and then nominates the few that should be tested and advanced to the next step, the pre-feasibility stage. Again, uh, uh, there is guidance for infill resource drilling as one of the scoping study outcomes. Uh, hi, John. I'm Roy from Shuklin and Bok. Um, just perhaps as a follow-up question to the earlier question, uh, you mentioned that the strategic exploration plan uh, can be used to target holes in the areas with the most uh, economic potential. So, um, what factors and consideration in the strategic exploration plan uh, are the most important in identifying such holes or areas with the most economic potential? It's a, it's a little bit hard to answer that because uh, it'll be the mining engineer and the process engineer telling you what they see as, as factors that we need to consider. Uh, they might uh, uh, put a conceptual pit around it and say that, you know, uh, costs are that you can only get to this depth uh, for this type of ore body. So it's, it's factors that I can't, you know, it's coming from a mining engineer and a process engineer, just so that you can understand the value of that project. And if you were to drill it out, it's telling you, don't go beyond this depth or beyond that limit because it's no longer 
uh, will never ever get into a mine plan. So basically that's it. That's telling us don't drill areas that are not necessary at an early stage. You can do that later. Alberto, would you have a comment on that from a uh, investment bank perspective? As an investment banker, you look at two sides of the coin. One is the upside and one's the downside. I, I think um, upside's always good. People always give you upside. So, you know, you, who wants to buy this for $6? This is the best water in the world. That's easier to say. But then when you, when you start saying, well, what's really in here? Um, people always overestimate things. So I actually take, um, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question totally, but feasibility studies and, and these studies, they, 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 they mean well and they're meant to protect the, the investor, especially protect the investor and protect bankers hide behind feasibility studies when they have to give loans. Uh, we use this for IPOs. But I, I think you should approach it from why would a feasibility study fail? Um, and, and generally, I, I think um, sometimes people overestimate um, certain parameters. And I think the key, you know, my um, 20 plus years experience, um, people always underestimate the costs involved to, to develop a project, so the capex blowout. And as a financial guy, you do the financial model, and someone says, oh, it's going to cost uh, $100 million to develop this mine, and it ended up costing you know, $120 million. That's 20% over budget. And, it, and then once you get into the production, um, it's the operating costs. Um, you know, never underestimate how much it costs to run a mine. Um, and, and then I guess from a due diligence point of view, is kind of the, uh, back to the, what, what I was talking about, um, detailed studies is sometimes people overestimate the quality of the resource by maybe higher grades than, than necessary. So you need detailed drilling. Um, and then from a market point of view, um, people, uh, we all hope that you know, gold price goes high if you're a gold investor. So um, usually banks, conservative banks have a, a price deck so even, even if gold price is $1,200 an ounce, when they give you a financing, they'll, they'll see if the project is robust at, say, $800 an ounce, see what the break-even point. So I think every investor should just have a, a feel on that. Um, I, I can tell you now, probably almost every gold project around in the world is ec economical at $3,000 an ounce. Um, the trick is, you want to invest in the ones that are economical at probably $800 an ounce. So you've got that, uh, at today's gold price, probably a three, dollars $400 buffer. The scoping study is defined by the draw code as an order of magnitude technical and economic study of potential viability of mineral resources. The key words are order of magnitude and potential viability. The scoping study is the first formal study that must conform to the JORC uh, reporting principles of transparency, materiality and competence. The scoping study applies modifying factors to inferred resources and expiration targets. However, however these are low confidence inputs which are not of sufficient quality to be reported as ore reserves under the JORC code. For this reason, scoping study results are gener generally uh, internal studies and are not publicly reported. Here is an example of a typical uh, scoping study report format and major headings. Uh, this template is used as the framework uh, for all subsequent evaluation studies. The quantity and quality of each work section increases as we move forward from this point. Please take note of the logical sequence of headings and inputs. The essential input is the deposit geology and resources. After that, uh, you have geotechnical and hydrology factors which influence mine design. A concept mine plan is required before we consider the process and products, so, and so on. At the scoping study stage, the bias should be to optimistic cost and revenue assumptions, as upside potential has not been adequately tested by infill drilling. <coughs> 